The Louis T. Network is powered by Music Head University. Music Heads, classes in session. Turn me up. Enroll on YouTube now. Link is in the description. Who else could it be? But me, your man, Louis T. Welcome to the Command Post Live. You know what it is. Post up. Take command. I, of course, am your commander in chief, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. It's not often that I am left speechless, but today's moves have put it over the top for me. I know O-line Bobby Johnson kind of put a damper on some of the moves that have been made previous to that hire. But look, you can't deny what Dan Quinn has done, what the rest of his staff has collectively allowed him to do. Don't discount the hire of Cliff Kingsbury and his influence on getting some of these guys here to Washington. But ultimately, we were told Dan Quinn can get us a staff. Adam Peters can get us a staff. Adam Peters is going to attract people here that wouldn't have come here otherwise. We were told this in the beginning. And you know what I did? I did the PTSD Washington Redskins slash Commanders fan thing, right? Somebody walks up to you that you know very well. Really solid dude, right? Always been rock solid, all right? Pause. Always been a guy you could trust. Y'all not best friends, but y'all damn good friends and y'all go way back. He rolls up on you and he says, yo, let me hold 50. You let me hold 50, I'm going to run you back five stacks. You're like, man, get the hell out of here. He's like, seriously, bro, let me hold 50, and I swear to you, I'm going to run you back five stacks. You let the 50 go. In your mind, you told yourself, I ain't getting that 50 back, and you ain't tripping about it. A month later, you already forgot about the $50. A month later, he hits you up, yo, let's meet. You meet him. He slaps five grand in your hand and you go, wait, wait a minute. This is the 50 I gave you? you. You running me five grand back? He's like, yeah, I told you I was going to run you five grand back. And you just sitting there like kind of dumbfounded, speechless. You really want to know where he got it from, but you really don't want to know where he got it from. You just take your five grand and you roll. When, when he said that to you, though, you gave him the. That's the look you gave him, like, whatever, man. <laughs> when they told us that Dan Quinn was going to help assemble a staff here that none of the other candidates would be able to assemble, we went, yeah, that's you just trying to sell us on Dan, man. Whatever. It's, hey, hey, it's cool. You ain't got to lie to me, Craig. You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. You ain't got to lie to me. Well, they won't lie to us. This shit is crazy. Lance Newmark is being brought in as our new assistant general manager. We'll dig into that here in a second. Daryl Tapp is being brought in as the assistant defensive line coach. So we wondered, uh, or excuse me, the defensive line coach. So we wondered what they were going to do. Was Jeff Scanina going to be uh, kept here? No. The answer is no. We have a new um, defensive line coach in Daryl Tapp. So then we started to wonder about, what are they going to do in the, in the DB room, right? We really was hoping we could get our hands on Al Harris. The Cowboys already blocked us. That's not happening. So there was this little sliver of hope I had because I don't know if y'all read this. Somebody sent me this. Shout out to whomever sent me this. But there was a little um, spat between the defense, assistant defensive line coach that we hired yesterday, uh, Sharif Floyd, and Greg Zimmer or Mike Zimmer that goes way back to when – he played for Zimmer and Zimmer, you know, kind of, you know, offhandingly made a remark about him not being available, always being hurt. And, and you can't essentially you can't miss something that you've never really had. He's never hurt. So how can I miss him in the lineup? And he said that hurt his reputation. You know, that hurt his pride. And they never really reconciled after that. So he couldn't be on the same staff with a guy that he felt like smeared his name. So that's why Dallas didn't block us. They just let us take him off their hands. So I was hoping maybe Zim Zimmer shows up in Dallas and maybe Al Harris has an issue. Maybe Dallas is like, all right, we don't want any smoke. You can go. They, I, I think they held out hope, realized that wasn't going to happen. So they move on to Tom Donatel. Okay. If the name, the surname rings a bell, it should. His dad, long time. And I told you, anybody that grows up with a coach as a father, bring them to me. Bring them to me. Right. So 
Ed Donatel is his father. Longtime NFL assistant, longtime NFL defensive coordinator, well skilled and well respected in the game. Bring me his offspring. Okay, so we got his son here. He was with the Chargers the last three years with their defensive backs, Duran James, uh, Michael. Um, uh, what's the guy? Uh, big tall corner man. Shucks. Why am I forgetting his name? And then obviously Asante Samuel Jr. So uh, this guy can coach as well. And he's young. I'm, I keep talking about these young coaches, right? Daryl Tapp, 39. Uh, Tom Donatel, I think he's 38, if I'm not mistaken. So I keep talking about these young coaches, right? These young guys that they're bringing in, and then they top it off with Anthony Lynn. You got to be effing kidding me. Now, we talked about Anthony Lynn last year when we had a vacancy at offensive coordinator. And I said, I didn't want Anthony Lynn here because he's too run heavy. But the one thing this man has been able to do in his career, if there's nothing else Anthony Lynn can do, is he can coach up and scheme up some run game. Number one rush offense back in the day when he was in Buffalo as their um, run, uh, running backs coach and then was upgraded to offensive coordinator briefly in Buffalo because of that ability to run the football. Number one run game. Goes to San Francisco. We've seen what they've done. And I get it. It's Kyle and it's Christian McCaffrey. But do not sleep on the impact that Anthony Lynn has in San Francisco or had in San Francisco with that run game. He's tremendous. He's one of the best in the business when we're talking about running the football. And now he's here in Washington as the run game coordinator. This is a ridiculous staff. Now, again, we don't know what it's going to equate to. We saw the staff that they had in 2013, and we won three games. I'm aware of this. But, look, I'd rather have the staff than not have the staff. Are you kidding me? Let's go over and make some social media maneuvers, and let's talk about this some more, man. This is ridiculous. So we start with Nikki Javala. Nikki Javala says the commanders are adding Anthony Lynn to their staff and hiring Tom Donatel as DB's coach, per source, okay? So at that point, um, we didn't really know, um, like, what the role was going to be for Anthony Lynn. We just knew we were adding him to the staff. Remember, our running backs coach position was still available, and maybe he will fit both of those roles. Right now, what we're being told is he's going to be the run game coordinator. Now, could that change, and could he end up being the running backs coach slash run game coordinator? Maybe. Maybe I would assume that's why he came here and took the job because he's going to get a piece of both of those titles. But again, we will see because we currently don't have a running backs coach. Um, so maybe he fits that that role for us as well. But then we start to build off of that Nikki Javala tweet. Um, you go to Adam Schefter and he talks about uh, the move that Washington made with Anthony Lynn. And he, he tweets out a big move for Washington. Commanders are hiring 49ers assistant head coach Anthony Lynn as their run game coordinator per league sources. Commanders made a run at Lynn last year, but getting him this year, and there's more to that tweet. I wasn't worried about that part of it. We made a run at him. Remember, we talked about Anthony Lynn last year as a potential offensive coordinator. It did not work out. We wanted him here in a different capacity. The 49ers weren't having it, and he wasn't leaving San Francisco for that because, again, he knew he's no dummy. Anthony Lynn's no stupid. He's not a dumb guy, right? He's been in this league long enough to know that that right there, that one year opportunity for Eric Bieniemy, that was a death trap. Okay, that is a no no and a cardinal sin in the coaching profession. When you see a guy essentially walking into a lame duck situation where they have to win or everybody's fired, and I'm a veteran coach and I've been there, done that, you think I'm walking into that situation when I'm coaching a team right now that was one game away from the Super Bowl and we think we can go to the Super Bowl, which they did this year? You think I'm leaving that situation to go to that? Hell no. So he told us, man, y'all get out my face. But now we we reapproach him this year, whole new staff, everything's set up. Everybody's getting two, three, four year deals, right? Because it, it's brand new. Now he wants to come on board. And guess who's here and why he's here? Adam Peters. That's right. That's his boy. And Adam Peters was able to lure him here. So after that, Shefty then adds on top of that and Another 49ers assistant coach is heading to Washington. San Francisco's uh, assistant defensive line coach, Daryl Tapp, who played defensive end and linebacker in Washington in 2013 during his 12-year NFL career, is taking over as the commander's defensive line co coach per sources. So that is another massive hire. 
All right, now this one is a little personal for me because this is homegrown product. If you're from the 757, then you know Daryl Tapp is from the 757. He went to Vitek. He uh, grew up in Newport News. He went to high school in Chesapeake. And so, or excuse, uh, excuse me, not Newport News, Portsmouth. And then he went to high school in Chesapeake. We all know the story if you're from the area because we follow those who come from this area and end up making it to the league and making it big. We follow their careers rather closely here. As a matter of fact, my old barber was really close friends with Daryl Tapp. We would talk about Tapp all the time because Tapp flew him out to Seattle because that's where he got drafted in the NFL and spent his first three or four years of his career. I think it was his first four years of his career in Seattle. He flew his uh, my old barber out to Seattle and we would talk about that situation all the time. And then he also brought him um, to a game in Washington when he was here in 2013. So uh, we, we would talk about Daryl Tapp. So it's just funny. It's funny how things kind of go uh, all, you know, around in a circle and, and come, you know, all around uh, into a, you know, full circles, you know, 360 degrees, right? So Tap coming here is a guy that I can root for, right? Another young coach that can relate as a player to these players on this staff. I just think it's a phenomenal job, again, of the, the meshing of teachers that are veterans who have done it, been around the block several times. Anthony Lynn is one of those guys, been a teacher, been around the block several times, hard nose, knows how to get it done with, with these young, exuberant, vibrant coaches who are just getting in the game, who want to be, who want to learn to be great teachers, but know how to get it done because they played at a high level in this league for many years. I just love that mixture. I just love that meshing of that together. And then you got also just the smart dudes who either couldn't cut it, but are excellent coaches or the coach's son. And you're bringing those guys in like Tom Donatel, right? Like the, the staff is ridiculous right now. Again, we'll see how it all comes together, but I'd rather have it than not have it, okay? And then we get to the big news, right? The big juicy, juicy news of the day. Uh, this is from Ian Rappaport. Sources, Commander's GM Adam Peters is hiring Lions Senior Director of Player Personnel Lance Newmark as the new assistant GM. A longtime respected scout in Detroit, Newmark was instrumental in building the Lions. Newmark hopes to help remodel Washington in a similar fashion. What was the one team we looked at and said, hey, we want to do the draft like them? After San Francisco, who we got Adam Peters from, and we talked about Adam Peters' success in San Francisco and all of the gems he found in the late rounds and in the mid rounds. But they missed in the first rounds, right? The first, you know, first round or second round, right? Which is fine. You're not going to hit everywhere. Now you're bringing in a guy who doesn't miss in the first round. A guy who didn't miss in the second or the third round and helped build that bully that we see in Detroit right now. Now, he didn't do it by himself, just like Adam Peters didn't do it by himself. But they were a part of a machine that was well-oiled that helped those teams to prominence. Isn't that what you want? Isn't that what you strive for? You, we, you reach back and you grab some of the best up-and-coming talent from the teams who have done it the best over the last five years. That's what we've done. We took Adam Peters, who was the biggest name on the market as the next big thing at GM, and now we reach back to Detroit and grab one of their up-and-coming assistants, and we put him in the assistant GM chair, and we continue to build this thing. This is what it's supposed to look like, guys. And gals, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is what we've been looking for forever. It's here, and a lot of you don't believe what you're seeing, and that's fine. I get it. This is a results-based business, and you're still waiting for results, and that's not going to come until I would say you've got to give this thing at least two years because you've still got a lot of different scouts that maybe these guys don't necessarily um, – and, and I think the scouts are are, are fine. Like you know, and Peter's talked about, oh, they're fine, you know. But they still want to get some of their guys in here too. But at the end of the day, these are going to be the guys making the decisions. You know, Lance Newmark and Adam Peters are going to be the guy. Like a lot of you were worried about um, Martin Mayhew and, and he would be influential. I told you, don't worry about Martin Mayhew. He's just here, all right? He's just on the staff. He's been bumped down another notch now that we're bringing in Lance Newmark. Okay, don't worry about Martin Mayhew. He's here for support. 
okay? Nothing wrong with having your boy as a hype man. Hey, Buster Rhymes is cool. You know what makes Buster Rhymes even better? Having Spliff Star over here hyping him up on the stage as he's rapping. It's nothing wrong with having a hype man with you. As long as he's not making any of the decisions, ain't nothing wrong with having a good old-fashioned hype man. That's what Martin Mayhew has been reduced to, a hype man, because we got real talent evaluators in the building now. This is fun. This is what we wanted. Now, we got to go out and we got to make it happen. This free agency period is going to be, I think, so, sort of instrumental, but really where the real meat and potatoes of this thing is going to really start to take shape is in the draft. We got the capital. We got to make a big decision at two. I've watched the two quarterbacks that I think we're going to be choosing from. I've got some really strong opinions about both of them. I can't wait to share them with you. Uh, if you're a member of the mob, we're going to talk about uh, how we're going to go about it because uh, we're going to watch some film. I want to talk to you guys about it. So if you're a member of the mob, we're going to jump into these all 22 uh, cutups of these quarterbacks. And I'm going to show you the things that I see and you can tell me what you see. Right. So uh, we'll, we'll do that next week, though. But as far as I'm concerned, how can you not be thrilled with what we've assembled here in Washington right now? How can you not? And then uh, the last tweet that I want to share with you is from Scott Abraham, um, who writes the Washington Commanders 2024 coaching staff right now. It looks like this. Uh, and, and this is what they've assembled this offseason. You know, obviously, Adam Peters was the big first domino to fall. Then Dan Quinn, obviously, hired as the head coach, offensive coordinator, Cliff Kingsbury, defensive coordinator, Joe Witt Jr., special teams coordinator, um, Larry Izzo, um, Offensive line coach, that's the one that, you know, a lot of us are skeptical about, rightfully so. Old line Bobby Johnson coming over from the Giants. Quarterbacks coach remains Tavita Pritchard. Wide receivers coach remains Bobby Ingram. Run game coordinator Anthony Lynn. Will he be the running back coach? We'll see. Um, tight ends coach uh, is David Rye. Linebackers coach Ken Norton Jr., another fabulous hire of a veteran that knows how to get it done at a position that we desperately need tremendous coaching at. Defensive backs coach now Tom Donatel. We just talked about him and what he's been up to the last few years uh, going back with the Chargers uh, and then had some time in Seattle before that. So uh, again, he's cut his teeth in this league and now he's ready for his opportunity to really get after it as a defensive backs coach. Um, assistant D-line coach Sharif Floyd talked about him yesterday. And now we've got a, a new defensive line coach adding to the mix. Uh, now in Daryl Tapp. So two young guys that played in the league coming together and Sharif Floyd and Daryl Tapp. You got a defensive pass game uh, coordinator and Jason Simmons. Um, then you have um, Ryan Kerrigan um, continuing to stay on this staff and, and, and a pass rush specialist uh, role. And then uh, you got uh, John Pagano. Here is a senior defensive assistant, Brian Johnson, uh, he has TBD, but we've been told, right, from what we understand, he's going to be the offensive pass game coordinator here in Washington. But we'll see. Um, we can leave that as TBD if you like. I'm going to go with offensive pass game coordinator, and we're going to move forward with that. So um, you see what, what's going on here. And then you can also squeeze in now assistant GM in Lance Newmark. This is, um, this is some fantastic shit. We watch what the Lions have done in the first round the last couple of years. We've watched what the Lions have done over the really the, the life of uh, their GM coming there in 2021, right? Um, and, and what they've been able to do. And Lance Newmark has been a huge part of that. I, I was madly in love with their draft. We, wa we watched that draft and we drooled over what they were able to do with Jameer Gibbs and Campbell and... Um, and the tight end, uh, Laporta, and Brian Branch. And th those were their first four picks? Are you kidding me? What? I'm excited. I, I think you can tell. I'm excited. Anyway, I digress. Um, let's get to the comment section. I'm not here to talk your head off. I just want. I was just too excited to do this in short video form. And, and so I was like, I, I just got to go live. When, when I get this excited, just go live, right? So that's what I wanted to do. So now we're just going to jump into the comment section real quick. And then I, I'll turn you loose. I don't, again, I don't want to talk your head off. Dre, King Dre, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. King Dre writes, what's up, Lou? What's up, King Dre? At this point, the type of staff we have in, in the front office and in the coaching department, good God almighty, 
if we don't win something soon sheesh much love lou i'm happy with this process i have been blown away and i told you it's not often that i'm left speechless but do you know how many times i was ready i was going to do this short form right when it was just <clears throat> i was watching film i was watching drake may film and, and and wrapping up my evaluation of him and so i saw the moves with tom donatel and I, I saw the addition of Anthony Lynn, and I was like, I'm just going to wait. I mean, let me finish doing what I'm doing here. I don't want to stop watching this film and taking my notes and, and, and finishing my evaluation. So I, I'll just wait until I'm done. I finished that up. I got ready. I did the artwork. I was ready to go. And then, boom, Daryl Taps added. I'm like, whoa, okay. And I love this hire, right? So I, they add Tap. And then I'm, I, I, so I rearranged the, the artwork, and I'm ready to go. And then, boom, right as I'm about to go live, uh, Ian Rappaport drops this bombshell on me. And I'm like, oh, my God. And, and then I see who it is, and I, I see what his role has been. And I'm like, damn it, this is awesome. And so I rearranged the artwork once again. And at this point, I'm too excited to do this in short form, too excited to do it locally. I got to go live. And here we are. I'm excited. I'm really, truly excited. This is what I envisioned this process looking like. When I said this was going to be one of the biggest off seasons and I talked about Adam Peters, you know what? Not getting Ben Johnson was a blessing in disguise. He would not have been able to assemble this type of staff for all of the offensive acumen that he possesses and how exciting watching his offense perform was. He would not have been able to do this. I can say that with 110% certainty. He would not have been able to put together this type of staff. And look, we don't know if he was ever going to be the head coaching hire in the first place. We liked him a lot. The echo chamber said he was the guy. Nobody else said he was the guy, just the echo chamber. But he wouldn't have been able to do this. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Rocky D, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB. Rocky D writes, O-line Bobby Johnson. O-line, Bobby Johnson. Word on the street, he's a suspect. Only questionable hire, but love the all-star cast so far. He's definitely, he's definitely a suspect right now. All right, we, he's the one we're looking for. All points bulletin out on O-line, Bobby Johnson. If you've seen him, bring his ass down to the headquarters. We got some questioning for O-line, Bobby Johnson. 85 sacks, we got questions. Do you have the answers or not, bro? Everything else? What, 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 what are we talking about right now, man? What are we talking about? Divine do care. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Oh, let me get this camera straight. My fault, guys. Um, I don't know how that happened. My bad. Could y'all hear me? I hope y'all can hear me. I'm pretty sure y'all can hear me. Um, Devon Ducare, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Devon Ducare writes, uh, I got a little emotional today. This is the first time in my 22 years of life I have hope for the future. I really think our time is here. All right, so good, y'all can hear me. I, I didn't want to have to repeat all of that over again. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, Bay. Appreciate you. Um, Devon do care. Um, it, it, I always tell you guys, the, the really young fans, I really feel bad for you because you haven't even seen what a sliver of winning looks like. But the thing I also appreciate about a lot of you is you haven't seen the worst of the worst and you didn't experience as much of the bad as we did. You know, the older fans, we pretty much lived through the, not pretty much, we lived through the entire Dan Snyder nightmare. If you're 22 years old, you only got a piece of that, okay? You only got a piece of that. It was bad, and you don't know what real winning looks like, but here's your chance to flush all of that. It's going to be hard for a lot of us veterans to flush the Daniel Snyder era. It's hard to flush that because that's so much of our fandom. For some, it's all of it. For you, it is as well. But 
this is and this is why I said this is the perfect opportunity for you to bring in a young fan. And they don't have to worry about what we went through. They won't be saddled with the PTSD that we have. It's a new day in Washington. And I know people don't want to hear that. And nobody outside of our fan base is trying to hear that shit. And I'm not going to try to explain this to Cowboys fans, Giants fans, Eagles fans. I don't give a shit what they think. We know because we've experienced it. We've lived it every single day for the last 24 years. We know what this shit has been. And this don't look anything like the shit that we've had to put up with for the last two decades plus. Nothing like it. This is brand new. It's fresh air. Freshness. This is great. Not only do we have a GM for the first time in 25, we got an assistant GM. Total mind blow, right? Thanks, Bay. Happy Valentine's Day. Love you. Mutib Khan, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes, what I love about DQ is that unlike Ron, he didn't just hire a bunch of his boys. He branched out to the entire league and tried to find the best. I told you guys when Dan Quinn hired, one of the first things I was going to watch for because they told us he was going to hire this tremendous staff, right? And I was like, all right, you know, and I told you, I told you, I gave you the analogy earlier, right? I gave you what the analogy was. Um, and I, I gave him the face of when, when your boy says, Hey, give me 50. I'm gonna turn it into five stacks. You like when they said, Hey, Dan Quinn can do something. None of these other coaches can do. He can bring in a, a, a an incredible staff with him to Washington. I'm over here on my sunshine Anderson shit. Heard it all before. I heard it all before, man. Talk is cheap. He's like, all right, that's cool. I, I get it. I'm going to just show you. So he did. And I am amazed at what he's been able to assemble. And I told you one of the things I'd be looking for is to see how many of his boys is he just going to round up. And, and look, it's, it's, it's natural. It's human nature to round it, to grab a couple of your boys. And he did that. He reached back and grabbed a couple of boys of his boys from Atlanta when he was there. And he reached back and grabbed a couple of guys from Dallas. But guess what? These are guys that he met that he was impressed with, you know, that grabbed his attention when he was there. It's not like he said, hey, we're getting the band back together. We're getting the band back together. And but like you said, there's guys from Tampa and, and, you know, a, a, or a guy from Tampa and, and a guy, a couple of guys from San Francisco. And, you know, there's a few guys from Dallas and the, the Eagles and the Giants. I mean, we, we took guys from every team, you know, the Raiders and we're all over the place. Got a couple of guys from the collegiate ranks and our offensive coordinator and Ken Norton Jr. But these guys have been in the NFL before. This is an all-star cast. Young coaches, old coaches, teachers, young pe- young coaches that are just coming up in the game. But that that you need that. One of these next coaches that we hire, one of these young guys, could be the next. Fill in the blank. You just you don't know. Video channel. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Video channel writes. Bullies on the staff now need bullies on the field, and and that's a part of the process. We you can't skip steps in this process, and I, and I made that abundantly clear. Ain't no skipping steps here, right? When you do this, if you do it correctly, then it's an order that needs to be achieved first in order to have the success, the sustained su- success that we are looking for. It started with hiring Adam Peters. Then it started with hiring Dan Quinn. And then we wanted to see what he was going to do, what kind of hires he was going to make. Well, he brought Joe Witt Jr. with him. He hired Cliff Kingsbury. And then we were off and running. And you've seen the staff that they've assembled. 
I would say that this first, these first two or three steps of the process, GM, head coach, staff, check, check, and check. And I'm talking A pluses. Now, the next thing is free agency. What do you do with your own guys? What do you do with what's out, out there? How much money do you spend, et cetera, et cetera? Then we go from there, and then the real fun begins. The draft. And that's where things are really going to have to change because that's why we're in the position that we're in right now. We haven't drafted well enough over the last two decades. Period. End of discussion. And it starts at number two. We don't get that right. I don't give a shit how good this staff is. We'll be right back here three, four years from now having the same damn discussion. They better get number two overall right. Now, we might not be talking about the same whack-ass roster where we don't have any talent. You could be in a position where, hey, we just whiffed on quarterback, but the rest of the roster is ready to go. That could be the position we put ourselves in. But you still ain't winning shit without a quarterback. We all know that, which is what the ultimate goal is. So we'll see. Rocky D, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, Rocky D. Is that a double up? Yeah, it is. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up. Who writes, seeing our staff, do you think Ben Johnson could handle these alphas? Dan Quinn, definitely. I can see clearly now. I, I already mentioned this. Ben Johnson, first and foremost, wouldn't have been able to assemble a staff like this. They wouldn't have been able to assemble a staff like this. When they talk about the vision being aligned and being blown away by Dan Quinn in the interview room, part of what Dan Quinn was selling them on was what he was going to do, what he was going to try to create here the kind of coaches he was looking to bring in. That was a part of what he sold to Adam Peters, Josh Harris and company. And he's delivering on that right now. Again, small sample size, right? We haven't, we haven't drafted a single guy. We haven't made a, a single free agent signing. We haven't played a single game. I'm fully aware of that. Just because we haven't won anything yet doesn't mean it's not different. Any, I just wanted to mention that to you too, guys. Some of you keep talking about, well, it's not different. They haven't won anything. Well, we haven't played any games yet. But don't tell me it's not different because it is. You can't simplify it and just say, well, it's not any different because we haven't won anything. That's bullshit. Because if you live through it like I lived through it, then you know good and well that it is different. We, we haven't experienced any results from a win-loss perspective yet. Absolutely. You're spot on there. But you again, you can separate the two. So miss me with that it's not different talk. You may not agree with all the hires. You may not love Dan Quinn. That's fine too. You're entitled to your opinion. And again, I welcome Every opinion here, whether you agree that this is an all all star cast of characters that they've assembled, or you're like, nah, whatever, we'll see. That's cool too. But what we can't argue with, what I'm not going to argue with anyone about, is that it's different. Now the results may not be different. I'm not talking about different from a wins loss perspective. Time will tell on that. I'm just talking about how business is being conducted is different. There's no argument there. Period. Exclamation point, end of discussion. K. Cruz, stand up. You are the newest member of the MOBB. Mob, y'all know what to do. Show K. Q, uh, Cruz some love. Welcome him with open arms. K. Cruz, welcome to the squad. Glad to have you on board. Divine, do care. Stand up. You are the newest member of the MOBB. Glad to have you on board. Looking forward to chopping it up with you in the future. Divine do care. Welcome to the squad. So let me reiterate this. Um, I've had a chance to watch two of the top three guys. I don't I don't foresee us getting our hands on uh, Caleb Williams, which is why I chose to do him last. 
um, because I, I just don't see him. I don't see the Bears passing up an opportunity to draft him. So I'm not going to uh, spend as much time talking about Caleb Williams. I already know what he's about. I've watched a lot of his games uh, and I know what he's fully capable of. But I'm going to watch the tape because I want to watch him in particular individually and, and see um, what he's out here doing. But um, I was I was really, really looking forward to uh, taking a, a hard, long look at Caleb, uh, uh, Drake May and Jaden Daniels. I was able to do that and I have a lot to say. So, um, like I said, Friday, I'm going to drop the Jaden Daniels video. Saturday, I'm going to drop the Drake May video. Sunday, Caleb Williams. And then next week, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about all of them. And then we're going to start that process. And we're just going to hit the ground running and we're going to go. And Mob, we're going to go live next week and um, several times next week. And we're going to watch the film. And and I, I got to get kind of a, a good feel for what what is a good time for everyone. What's the best time for everyone? It, it may not fit into everyone's schedule as far as uh, us linking together and, and looking at the all 22s and going over some of the, the notes that I've taken. And, and again, getting your opinion. I'll give you mine, et cetera. Then we can move on. Um, we'll figure out what's a good time for us to link up. Is it the evening? Is it the afternoon? Um, it's probably going to be the evenings. Um, but in any event, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll cross that bridge when we get there next week. Um, in any event, excited about the hires that Washington has made. You know, Lance Newmark um, has set a new mark in terms of excitement for the offseason now, adding him to uh, a front office that we were already really excited about just by the, the hire of Adam Peters. A lot of you are still nervous about the Marty still hanging around. Adding a guy like Lance Newmark pushes those guys down even further. So um, you're getting guys that have a keen eye for talent. Clearly, when everybody told the Lions they were crazy for drafting Jack Campbell in the first round and drafting Jameer Gibbs, you don't draft a running back in the first round, especially one like Jameer Gibbs. They looked at everybody and said, shut up. They, it, when everybody was saying, hey, you got to go get – you know, Dalton, um, the, the kid from um, Utah, you got to go get the other kid um, from uh, Oregon State. They were like, shut up. They went and got Sam Laporta. And not to say that those other two guys aren't going to be really good, but he was the best rookie tight end of, of a really talented class of tight ends to come into the league. He was the best. And we all know about Brian Branch. We just flat out whiffed not drafting Brian Branch when we told him we were going to take him. And we still screwed the pooch. But that's no here nor there. We got two dudes that are, to me, as sharp as any assistants in the league at evaluating talent. They're now both here in Washington. I feel really good. I feel really good. You know what this feels like it's about to turn into? This feels like it has a chance here in Washington. And again, only success is going to breed this. It feels like an operation that's going to eventually start turning into a place where other teams come to poach away and take our guys from us. If, if this thing is successful, you don't think Lance Newmark is going to be a GM in the league at some point? You don't think if this thing goes really well from a defensive state, like you got to look at it like the, 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 the entire canvas is blank. If you're Daryl Tapp and you're coming here to coach the D-line, we don't have any defensive ends right now. It's a completely blank canvas. <laughs> we got to go out and draft the guys that will probably be or go in the free agency to get the guys that will probably even be starting next year. The defensive tackles are there, but we have no ends at all. Unless you want to count K.J. Henry, Andre Jones Jr., thanks but no thanks. We're actually building a staff in a front office that, if successful, will bring others here to come poach our items away. When's the last time we've even been remotely close to being relevant enough that others wanted something we had? Got to go back to when the Shanahan's were here. 
Got to go back to when Sean McVay was taken away from us. All right. Remember, McVay was a holdover from the Shanahan's here in Washington. That wasn't a Jay Gruden. You know, he wasn't a Jay Gruden guy. The last time we were relevant enough for other teams to want anything that we had was when the Shanahan's were here. You're talking about over a decade ago. Now, again, only winning is going to breed that kind of attention. Not, not excitement, winning. But you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Anyway. Devon Ducare, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB who writes. When we get into Drake May film review, QB1, by the way, um, next week, like I said, um, we'll, we'll go over it next week. I'm, I'm already done my evaluation of him, so I'm, I'm set there. I just got to um, figure out how I want to go about it. Um, I don't think I'm going to cut it up. I think I'm just going – we're just going to watch, like, I think there are certain games that are impactful for me. I watched six Drake May games, six. Feel really good about how I feel about him and, and what he is as a, a prospect. Um, I watched five on Jaden Daniels. So I feel really good with, with that assessment. And um, I, But I'm not going to – I think what I'm going to ultimately do is take the three most um, impactful games, the games that you get to see the best and the worst of those quarterbacks so that you know what you're getting yourself into potentially. So I think that's what I ultimately do. Take about three games and go through them. And then, you know, we just chop it up and talk about what we just watched. And I'll give you my notes as uh, we're going through some of those games, right? So that'll happen next week at some point. Anyway, I digress. Um, Dor Gunner, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Thank you for being a member of the MOBB who writes, stay cautiously optimistic, Lou. Oh, I am. Trust me. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. But that's not going to make me take my win total from six or seven this year to, to 11 or 12. I'm not stupid, okay? I'm excited about I told you this is a process. And that hasn't, because of my excitement, it hasn't blinded me to the point where I lose all sense of reality. That's the difference between last year and the year before that is because I thought we were ready to win. When somebody tells you it takes three to four years and we get to year four, and you feel like you're close and then you, you just need one or two pieces here or there or you need to tinker this to be really competitive, not to win a Super Bowl or anything, but to be really competitive. And I thought we had done that. Yeah, that, that really put me in a position to think, man, we can win 11 games. Now, I'm not doing that this year. And nothing's going to change my mind about how this team is going to perform. They're going to have to shock me. If they if, if they win more than seven games, I'll be shocked. Seven is as high as I can see this thing going this year. I know that's crazy for some of you because some of you are going to go crazy and, hey, we're winning the Super Bowl this year. And I know some of you, you'll say that, but you're, it's tongue in cheek. Some of you are dead ass. You're dead ass when you say that. Not me. I'm, I, I'm going to stay optimistic. You know what I am. I don't I can remove the cautiousness, though. The cautiousness came from Dan Snyder and knowing that you're never going to win as long as he's the owner. So make sure you protect yourself. I'm going, I'm all in. I already told you that. I'm all in on Adam Peters. Where the cautiousness might come into play is Dan Quinn. But I'm all in on Adam Peters. I'm all in on Lance Newmark. Anyway, I digress. Um, so you guys get out of here. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. I look forward to chopping it up with you the next time. Man, Washington is killing it. Daryl Tapp added as defensive line coach. Tom Donatel added as defensive backs coach. A big one. Anthony freaking Lynn added as run game coordinator. Still haven't hired a running backs coach, which leads me to believe either they're going to make a hire here shortly or they've offered that position to Anthony Lynn. We'll see. Either way, I'm stoked, man. And then the big news of the day, Lance Newmark coming over from Detroit 
to be our assistant general manager. As if having Adam Peters wasn't good enough, we added even more talent to that front office. Man, I'm excited about the draft. I think we're going to get this shit right finally. We'll see what happens. I digress. You guys, get out of here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Valentine's Day. And hopefully we'll be able to link up a little bit later on because I got a lot to talk about on the podcast tonight. So hopefully uh, you'll join me for that. But in any event, I digress. You guys get out of here. Take care. We on the way up. Or as a wise man once told me, Mortimer, Mortimer, we're back. <laughs>